it's the really Charlie podcast. Yeah, it's the really Charlie podcast. Yo, yo, it's the really Charlie podcast. Bump into your broadcast, grab a chair, fill your glass. Yeah, it's the really Charlie podcast. Yo, it's the really Charlie podcast. Yeah, yeah, it's the really Charlie podcast. Bump into your broadcast, grab a chair, fill your glass. Hey, 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 welcome to the Really Charlie Podcast. I'm Charlie Perry, and I am here once again to bring a story to you that's been bothering me for quite a while. You know, it's kind of disturbing, but um, it's something we go through. You know, we go through, you know, ups and downs of life and just can't understand why things happen the way they do. And in this particular case... I think uh, things just unexplained um, other than, you know, just uh, vanity, stupidity, um, and uh, nepotism. So the story we're going to talk about today is actually, um, it's in regards to the African Meeting House, which is the meeting. Museum of African American History, and it's on Nantucket Island in Massachusetts. That's 29 York Street, Nantucket. Um, great little area. Um, have many, many friend, uh, family on the island you know, with a few friends. So it's definitely some place. It's a, a very dear place to me, and. Um, I'm very, very fond of Nantucket Island, which is the home of my family, um, some of my family. So anything that happens on the island, um, I'm very concerned um, and uh, and very dear. You know, when I have a sentimental um, uh, feelings towards the island um, and want nothing but the best. In this particular case, it was a civil case. Well, it's become a civil case, but it was a criminal incident um, where the African meeting house was destroyed or vandalized by some derogatory racial um, phrases on the building of a historic building. A building that um, has history within the country, within its people, being both, well, just being Americans, period, you know, it's part of our history. So what um, what I'm going to do is, is, is I have, I have the case right here. And uh, it's kind of a little, a uh, lot of light, but I just want to show you how thick it is. It's pretty thick. It would have never been this thick if just people, if people just did their job. You know, um, you did your job as a town. You did your job as a, a police officer. If you did your job as a chief of police, and if you did your job as district attorney, and maybe even state attorney, you know, but uh, just do your job. In the words of uh, my favorite coach, Bill Belichick, do your job. Well, in this case, some people have just didn't do their job. They didn't do anything um, worthwhile when it came to two residents on the island. And that would be James Barrow and Rosemary Samuels. Um, they complained. And thank God of the good work of 
themselves and their attorney. Um, they were able to open some eyes and actually get this stuff heard. But they went through so many steps, so many steps to speak to the authority, speak to the uh, administration of the town. And they try to shut them up. They also slandered their name by just basically think, you know, saying that they wasn't coming forward with information. When all in all, Nantucket Police Department knew the information they needed to continue to go forward with this case. So they chose not to investigate this. They chose to just leave it on the back burner for let me see, two, wow, four years, four years, four years. Uh, the only work that was getting done was uh, by Mr. Barrows and Miss Samuels and their attorney. Now, don't get me wrong. It's just a little few people on that island that just have titles that they took oath. They took an oath of office for. And they're not doing anything. Um, the law is law. But sometimes nepotism supersedes the law, you know, and you try to just work some evil magic and try to make things go away. But, um, or make sure that things are not seen or observed. So this particular case, you know, filed, filed in um, Superior Court. Um, and it's being, it's in front of a judge and it's being heard and decisions are going to be made. Well, the, you know, the facts of the case have been heard. And um, so, but we're going to start from the beginning. We're going to start from the beginning and I'll just go for a little while and, uh, I'll stop at some point, but I just want to go on record um, and bring it forward this case um, for probably the second or third time that I've done it on this podcast. So let's go. Sometime during the overnight hours of March 10 and 11, 2018, Dylan Ponce, named person. Spray painted the phrase, which I won't say, but it's the N word and it says leave in large black letters on the doors of the African meeting house on Nantucket. If you Google the African meeting house, you'll see a picture of it, a very small building, which was used as a church and now is a museum. All right, let's see. On the next day, Ponce confessed what he had done to his employee, employer, Jeffrey Sale. He bragged that overnight he hit the, he hit the church and he tagged it tag me and writing graffiti all over it which it's very graphic nasty you know and if i put it up or i say the n-word on on this stream on this uh, podcast you know what's going to happen just going to take it down and it's just a way of censoring me or censoring the truth i would love to say this i would love to say exactly what's in this this uh civil suit in this statement, this affidavit. But uh, I just want to just bring this to your attention without getting censored by uh, the community standards of Facebook. Um, so Ponce told S Sale that after driving away from a Nantucket nightclub, drunk, and on his way to smoke a joint, 
he passed the church, parked up the street, went back, and sprayed it with black paint. So he's already intoxicated, filling his wild oats, and decided, hey, let's go to the black church, black museum, black whatever, and let me just paint something so it can meet and greet them folks when they wake up early morning and open the doors of the African meeting house. So, when deposed on the oath, whether he wrote the words and leave on the African meeting house, Ponce refused to answer any questions on the topic and asserted his privilege against self-discrimination. And he played the fifth. Likewise, when deposed on the oath about his conversation with Sale, Ponce refused to answer any questions by asserting his privilege against self-incrimination. So it pleads the fifth. Pleads the fifth. In response to the set, uh, sorry, in response to a set of in, interrogatories on the same topics, Ponce refused on the oath to answer the interrog- uh, interrogations or interrogatories ooh, based on the assertion that of the privilege against self incrimination. So this was his answer throughout the deposition. And um, so the guy just knew what he was doing and didn't want to incriminate himself. So later in the week of March 11, 2018, now we're in 2022. So this is how long this has been going on. Pont stowed sale where the spray can, uh, spray paint can was hidden in his apartment. Sale went to Ponce's apartment, took the paint, took the paint can, and hid it in a pickup truck that Sale owned. In 2019, a year later almost, around the one-year anniversary, actually it is a year, of the hate crime, Ponce bragged to Sale about not having been caught in Sale's words like the anniversary. He, being Ponce, had chuckled or something. I think it was six years, I think it was six years left or something, and I'm safe, you know, in the statute of limitations. So here he is, Ponce, just counting the years down, counting the months away, and says there's a statute of limitations. So he's very aware aware of what he done and guess what he thinks it's no big deal i can wait nobody's going to catch me of course they're not going to catch you well he thought so because you have m- much more bigger people behind you to cover up anything that you have done which here it is the anniversary date and uh, he still hasn't been questioned. According to Sale, more than a year after the hate crime in June 2019, Sale told his brother-in-law, Nantucket Deputy Police Chief Gibson, it's a deputy police chief, he told. So Sale is uh, he's making it known that Ponce did this. And it brings it a step further. And then he talks to an in law who happens to be the deputy police chief. And he said Ponce was the one who defaced the African meeting house. In response, Gibson said, oddly, we know we can't prove it can't prove it 
You have a witness right there in front of you, face to face, in your face, saying that Punch did it. Don't you think that's enough? So, the Nantucket Police Department never asked Sale to turn over the paint can that he said that he had. Originally erected around 1825 by the African Baptist Society, the African Meeting House is the only public building constructed and occupied by African Americans in the 19th century, still standing on Nantucket. Historic, right? I think so, right? Yeah. Oh. The small post and beam building this explains it in itself how historic this building is. A national historic landmark is the island's most vivid reminder of living in the 19th century black community. You can see some pictures and images on uh, the website. It's www.maah.org slash Nantucket location. Just put in the African meeting house on Nantucket. Google it. It will come up. It is now a museum that's open to the public, which presents cultural programs and exhibits on the history of African Americans on Nantucket. It makes the African Meeting House available for ceremonies and special events. There's a lot to do in Nantucket, but this is one location. You know, if you're on the island, stop by. And just read some history. Maybe you're not aware of the history and you might get a history lesson. I know Nantucket to be a very welcoming community, a very civic minded community. So when you go on the island, you're going to have a ball. They're going to be very, very happy on in, in all occasions, maybe. And, uh, and just love the island. And they definitely want you to return. So hospitality is good, in my opinion. The African Meeting House is one of the oldest African-American church buildings still standing and in use in this nation. The plaintiffs, James Barrows and Rosemarie Samuels, are both black residents of Nantucket and been there for quite a long time. While they learned of the defacement of the African Meeting House, the most significant symbol of black community on Nantucket, they both felt threatened and intimidated by the racist act. They both felt scared and feared for their safety and their families. As a result of the racist act, there was a sense of security in ascending places of public accommodation, including the African American meeting house. I'm sorry, the African meeting house has been diminished. As a result of the racist act, they no longer feel safe using public ways on Nantucket particularly at night. History of America is coming back to us where you have that fear of being a black person traveling at night. Um, in the case of Mr. Barrows, much older senior citizen who experienced a lot of things in his life. And uh, there's probably a lot of trauma in that. He's not a fearful man at all, but he's 
not a stupid man also. The intimidated racial epithet painted on the African meeting house targeted Miss Samuels and Mr. Barrows as member, members of the Nantucket small black community, black population. My grandfather lived on York Street, not too far from this location. The African Meeting House is a place of public accommodation. Miss Samuels and Mr. Mr. Barrows have visited it often, but less so since the racist graffiti was painted on the doors by Ponce. It has been and remains an important meeting place and civic symbol of Nantucket's black community. The plaintiff being Barrows and Samuels read the deposition of Jeffrey Sale stating that Dylan Ponce confessed to him and that he painted the racial epithet on the church and Ponce bragged about not getting caught. They became scared of Ponce, and they were worried about seeing him around Nantucket. They were also worried that they may harass the plaintiffs or take their revenge, sorry, take revenge against them because they had spoken out about this hate, hateful act. Been there, done that. And it does happen. The failure of Nantucket police or other law enforcement agencies, including the Massachusetts Attorney General, the Massachusetts State Police, and the District Attorney for the Cape and Islands, upon learning of Ponce's confession to sale, to hold beyond directly accountable under the law and despicable act of hate has left them feeling unsafe unprotected by the Commonwealth based on the color of their skin. One thing I got to mention personally is um, the state police did do an interview. Um, and then at some point, you know, powers to be, you know, there's not much more they can do other than bound it out over to, you know, state police higher authority so they did conduct an interview and i gotta give them that but with all the material and all the evidence that's presented to them i think an arrest should have been fly or done or at least a court complaint by either agency because sale is definitely coming forward given public he's actually given statements to authorities about Ponce and his behavior and his criminal act so anything i'm saying is definitely from this document here this this case I'm not trying to hurt anybody's reputation but it's public knowledge now I'm going to go forward and read two statements, affidavits from the plaintiffs. This, the first one is by James Barrows. I, James Barrows, do declare and state the following based on my personal knowledge. I am a resident of Nantucket, Massachusetts. I am 78 years old and I am black. In March 2018, I saw the racist graffiti painted on the doors of the African meeting house on Nantucket. A true and accurate image of what I saw is attached to the statement, which is in this document. That's all he's saying. He looked at the picture. He said, yep, that's what I seen. That's what I was offended about. And that's what pissed me off or had me in fear. He says further in the statement, in the affidavit, it says, I, I saw the white doors of the African meeting house had been spray painted with intimidating phrase and 
leaves. The hateful and deeply offensive racist epithet painted on the African meeting house threatened and intimidated me as a black American. It scared me. The hateful and deeply offensive racial epithet painted on the African meeting house caused me to fear for my safety and my family's safety. It also caused me to question my safety in public places and ways such as streets and sidewalks on Nantucket, particularly at night. Nantucket is a small island. The winter population of the island is overwhel overwhelmingly white. I am a racial minority on the island. The intimidating racial epithet painted on the African American meeting house target me as a member of the island's small black community black population. The African Meeting House is a place of public accommodation. I have visited it often, but less so since the racial graffiti was painted on the doors. It has been and is an important meeting place and civic symbol for Nantucket's black community. I read the deposition of Jeffrey Sale stating that Dylan Ponce confessed to him that he had painted the racial epithet on the end church and that Ponce then bragged about it not getting caught. I'm scared of Ponce. I am worried about seeing him around Nantucket. I am worried that he may harass or take revenge against me because I have spoken out about the hate crime. I also am shocked to learn that Nantucket police knew who did it, but never made an arrest. The failure of the Nantucket police and other law enforcement agencies, including the Massachusetts Attorney General, the Massachusetts State Police, and the District Attorney for the Cape and Islands, upon learning Ponce's confession to sale, to hold anyone directly accountable under the law for the despicable act of hate has left me feeling unsafe and unprotected by the Commonwealth based on the color of my skin. Signed under the penalties of perjury this 29th day of March, 2022. That is the affidavit of James Battles. I'm gonna continue on with the uh, Affidavit of Rosemarie Samuels. And feel free during this time to leave a comment or two. And, um, you know, I'll address it once I read this affidavit. I, Rosemarie Samuels, do declare and state the following based on my personal knowledge. I am a resident of Nantucket, Massachusetts. I am 58 years old. I am black. In March 2018, I saw the racist graffiti painted on the doors of the African meeting house on Nantucket. A true and accurate image, which is attached to this document. I saw that the white doors of the African meeting house had been spray painted with the intimidating phrase, and leave. The hateful and deeply offensive racist epithet painted on the African meeting house threatened and intimidated me as a black American. It scared me. The hateful and deeply offensive racial epithet painted on the African meeting house caused me to be in fear of my safety and my family's safety. It caused me to question my safety in public places and ways such as streets and sidewalks on Nantucket, particularly at night. Nantucket is a small island. The winter population of the island is overwhelmingly white and racially uh, a racial minority on the island. The intimidating racial epithet painted on the African meeting house targeted me as a member of the island's small black community. I have read the deposition of Jeffrey Sale stating that Dylan confessed to him and 
painted the racial epithet on the end church. And Ponce then bragged about not getting caught. I am scared of Ponce. And, excuse me, and I'm worried about seeing him around Nantucket. I am worried that he may harass me or take revenge against me because I have spoken out about the hate crime. I am shocked to learn that the Nantucket police knew who did it, but never made an arrest. The failure of the Nantucket Police Department or other law enforcement agencies, including the Massachusetts Attorney General, the Massachusetts State Police, and the District Attorney for the Cape and Islands, upon learning of Ponce's confession to sale to hold anyone directly accountable under the law for the despicable sorry, act of hate has left me feeling unsafe and unprotected by the Commonwealth based on the color of my skin. Signed under the penalties of perjury of, excuse me, signed under the penalties of perjury this 30th day, March 2022, R.M. Samuels. So the statements are very similar in the lawsuit. It's filed. Uh, got an affidavit by attorney John R. Hitt, Esquire. Um, and he's doing his work. Doing his work very well. There's a lot of truth in here. So many things that have been told in, in here. Now remember, there, there is a video of when Rosemary Samuels and Jimmy Barrows went to the town meeting and wanted to be spoken or heard. And they were stopped. Jimmy was even verbally confronted by the chief of police, um, William Pittman, and uh, explaining that Jimmy's the only one on the island that knows this information or knows who the suspect is. Well, chief Pittman, you did know, and your deputy chief Gibson did tell you, and you did nothing. But then you go into this town hall, town meeting, and you lie. Nantucket, you gave this guy this title, and he pretty much didn't earn it. Because he has a history of being involved in civil suits, which is something you may not be able to avoid. Sometimes as a police officer, people will sue you. And it becomes part of the job. But Chief Pittman had another incident not too uh, some time ago where he violated the rights of a woman in another state. I don't have the documentation on it, but I am aware of it. And uh, so he's quite familiar with um civil suits and the process and how long it takes. Maybe in this case, he knew he had time. So he just ignored it. The law is the law. But sometimes nepotism supersedes the law. And uh, things get overlooked or pushed aside. This definitely was something that was pushed aside and ignored. Maybe they felt Jimmy Barrows just got a big mouth, don't know how to keep his mouth shut. 
Why should he? Do you like it? Do you like that word? If you like that word, say it. Go everywhere that you possibly go today and just say that word out loud and see where it gets you. Maybe you might have some people sing when choir, like a choir, and just say the N word. Striking up a band. Maybe that. Maybe you like that. Maybe you think something's not wrong with derogatory terms like calling people Indians when they're Cherokee or Choctaw or Wampanoag Indians, um, Native American, and correct myself on that. So they're not Indians. They're called Cherokees, Navajo, Choctaw, Blackfoot. Not Indians. If you think that word is inappropriate, all right, I'll give you, all right, we'll replace that word. All right, since you gave black people the name, the N word, right? Put. The home of inward, right? Put a picture of a black man right here, a black woman, right? Put the home of and give that t shirt to your mama and see if she wears it outside. Give that pit give that t shirt to your mother or your father, or your grandmother. Give it to your kids, send them to school with it. If you feel that word isn't derogatory, well, and then I'll prove my case that it is derogatory. Now, don't get me wrong. Some black folks in this community, in this world, they're saying the N word like it's uh, and but or, or, and but or, or. And you got to stop that. Keep using that word because obviously if you're using it, some people think it's okay, but it isn't. So the people of Nantucket, I love you. I really do. You have done so many, so many good things for centuries. And in the 19th century, you actually supported the the building of the African Meeting House, which was a church, um, Baptist church on your island. And during those times, things were uh, tumultuous and, you know, things like that weren't being done. But you opened your arms. And in most cases, you probably helped put this building up. And now, Dylan Ponce decided he wanted to, he didn't destroy it. He defaced it. Can't destroy it with some crazy spray paint. But you definitely brought some attention to it. And I could say thank you. Maybe some people will now want to go visit the African meeting house in, in Nantucket. Check it out. And then when they're finally done, they say, wow, that was real nice. Small place. But it was priceless by going there. All right, everyone. This is my episode. And let's see, we have the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to this this republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. 
including black folks. All right, everyone, continue to support me on the Really Charlie podcast. I'm glad you listened. And um, I'll pay attention to the comments. And um, five stars to Jimmy Barrows and Rosemary Samuels, along with the attorney. Thank you for bringing this forward. Thank you for having the stamina to fight things like this, because you truly need a lot of stamina when it comes to bringing up issues like this, when you're also fighting the system. Definitely we're fighting the system and the system and the agencies have nothing but time on their hands to just wait and see how long you will last in the fight. Continue to fight. Stay to the end. You can do it. There's many, many people behind you. And to the board members of the African Meeting House, shame on you. Because it took two civilians, two residents of Nantucket Island, to be the voices of the African meeting house. And you guys sit on the board making much, much money, six, six figures probably, if not pretty close to it. And you felt that it was no big deal, no big deal. Or it's been taken care of. Shame on you need to revamp that that uh that board put some other people in place so they can do the right thing as residents of massachusetts do the right thing and you should have stood up a little bit stronger and prouder for the african meeting house but you did it and uh remember Maura Healy is up for election. Maybe this is a case that you put in front of her when she's asking for your vote. I got it. I got the case. And I'm also know, uh, I also know that her office didn't do too much either. So hate to get political on a really Charlie podcast, but she's up for election. She should have gave an explanation a long time ago, but she'll probably bring, give up an explanation now that she's running for office. Now that her title is being tested um, by numerous people are coming up. So, All right, everyone, this is the Really Charlie podcast. Continue to support me on the Really Charlie podcast on Spotify, Anchor, YouTube, Facebook, and occasionally I'm on LinkedIn. And uh, I really appreciate your support. And uh, StreamYard has been very, very good to me. This episode and my many episodes are brought to you by StreamYard, which is very, very good. And um, you can, like I said, find the Really Charlie podcast on StreamYard, Anchor, Spotify, Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Continue, continue to support this podcast because it's for you. And thanks for the comment here. Jay Martinez, awesome show today. Charlie, hold them accountable. I sure will. As long as I get it, get the proof in the pudding right here. Not trying to slander anybody. As long as I have some facts behind my story, I definitely will bring it forward. What's up, Lucky? How you doing? Love you, bro. 
hopefully y'all as well continue to sing and dance and do your thing i appreciate you please share 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 this podcast make it known make it public on your facebook page make it public spread the word just by sharing this podcast you don't have to speak up i did all the speaking for you through jimmy jimmy and uh rosemary samuels all right god bless take care i'm gonna go and enjoy this weekend with some family and friends and god bless you all and i just want to let you know in tucket in tucket island i am proud of you but let's finish this job let's finish this task and bring these people to justice god bless and i will conclude with my favorite song by Lionel Peter Walker. It's the really Charlie Podcast. Yeah, it's the really Charlie Podcast. Yo, yo, it's the really Charlie Podcast. Bump into your broadcast. Grab a chair, fill your glass. Yeah, it's the really Charlie Podcast. Yo, it's the really Charlie Podcast. Yeah, yeah, it's the really Charlie Podcast. Bump into your broadcast. Grab a chair, fill your glass.